Minka Fitzpatrick. If you've watched any college football whatsoever in the last three years, then you've probably heard his name before. You've seen the hype, all the talk about versatility and the championship pedigree, but what actually is Fitzpatrick as a prospect? Ignoring all of the excitement about him being able to play every spot in the secondary, what is his best spot in the secondary that can make him a worthwhile pick in the first round? To me, it's not outside corner or as a box safety enforcer or even as a slot corner, but rather as a center fielding free safety. When I watch Fitzpatrick on tape, even though he spent most of his time as a slot defender, what stands out the most to me is his speed, hip fluidity, and ball skills, all three of which are crucial requirements for a free safety. Can he play corner in the slot? Absolutely. He showed he has the footwork, the balance, and the physicality during releases to play that role very well. But if I'm a coach and I see a six foot, 200 pound DB that can run 4-4, track the ball with ease, and has excellent zone awareness and pattern reading abilities, why would I ever, ever restrict him to just being a slot corner in the first place? I can get a pure slot corner that comes in on nickel packages much later in the draft, if not as an undrafted free agent like the Broncos with Chris Harris, the Jaguars with Aaron Colvin a few years ago, or even the Falcons more recently with Brian Poole. But what is much, much harder to find than those slot corners is an elite ball hawking free safety. I went over this same point quite extensively last year when talking about Malik Hooker and Eddie Jackson as prospects, and that's because in these cover one and cover three defenses that are all the rage in the NFL these days, that entire system totally falls apart if you don't have range and ball skills at the free safety position. I'm not exaggerating, the whole coverage scheme completely ceases to function as intended without that role being filled. It's the second most important spot in that system behind obviously getting a franchise pass rusher. I'll use Malik Hooker's first career interception for the Colts from last year as an example for why that is. In a cover three, it is the responsibility of the cornerbacks who are both playing deep third zones to make a play on any deep balls down the sidelines. They are typically in a bail technique with their hips pointing inward and their eyes on the quarterback and they're over the top of the receiver as they bail out so they can read the route with their peripheral vision while also tracking the ball through the air. While this technique is very vulnerable to comeback routes or anything that attacks underneath that zone, it makes it extremely hard for the quarterback to complete any deep balls down the sideline because the corner is selling out against those deeper routes the entire time. That's the main value of this coverage in theory is that it completely shuts down the long ball. While the corners are playing the boundaries, the free safety's job is to patrol the middle of the field from numbers to numbers. It's a huge amount of grass to cover, much more than either of the corners are responsible for, so speed and fluidity are at a premium. Your typical cover two safety that runs a 4-6-40 is not going to cut it here. They have to have range, and the more speed you have, the more range you have, which is why Malik Hooker and Minka Fitzpatrick both running legit 4-4s is such a big deal. Now, the Colts are playing a combo coverage here, so they're not entirely using cover three principles. They do have the boundary side corner, Quincy Wilson, playing man coverage, but that doesn't really change Hooker's responsibility per se. He's still in center field, and he's still responsible for taking away any passes inside the numbers, regardless of what techniques his corners are playing outside. And this helps his corners because they know that with Hooker being inside, they can kind of sell out against those outside releases and just play the boundary. That's what Wilson is doing here. He's starting to flip his hips outside early so that he can squeeze the receiver into the sideline and make those deep shots even harder to complete. JJ Nelson double releases back inside of Wilson, however, because he really does not want to get pinned against the sideline and he would rather take his chances in the seam. That's where Hooker comes in. As long as Hooker is the free safety in this defense, you cannot take chances in that seam. He has way too much range and he can get from center field to outside the numbers immediately to pick this ball off. Even if it were not overthrown, which it was, Hooker still would have intercepted this pass because anything short of throwing it at the boundary is still within his range. Having a great center fielding, ball hawking free safety with 4-4 speed means that a quarterback's only option on deep passes is to try to fit the ball right on the boundary, which is both a difficult throw and an even more difficult catch for the receiver, especially when the corner is selling out to stop that exact throw from happening. If you want to play cover three and you want your corners to be able to aggressively play those sideline passes, you have to have a free safety that can take away the seams inside of those corners. It's the only way that the system can function and that's why I envision Minka Fitzpatrick playing that role at the next level. 
I know that he's a good nickel defender. I know that he has the size and physicality to disrupt smaller receivers in their releases and the quickness to still keep up with them in their breaks. I know that he's a physical edge setter against the run and that you can blitz him very effectively as well. I'm aware of the reasons that a lot of people compare him to a larger but not as quick version of Tyron Matthew. Their skill sets are definitely similar. But here's the thing, why have a good nickel corner when you can have a great free safety? What's the point of holding him back from being elite at that role in the NFL just because he rarely played it in college? To be honest, his whole projection to me is a very similar situation to Malcolm Jenkins when he was coming out of Ohio State. Just like Fitzpatrick, he was an All-American cornerback and a Jim Thorpe Award winner who excelled in the slot and had great ball skills. He measured 6 feet tall and just over 200 pounds at the combine, also just like Fitzpatrick, and had a 33-inch vertical, the same number as, you probably guessed it, Minka Fitzpatrick. Hell, they were both New Jersey recruits too and their hometowns are 30 miles from each other if that wasn't already a close enough comparison. After Jenkins' rookie season in New Orleans, he was moved from corner to free safety where his range, ball skills, and intelligence landed him a spot on the 2010 All-Pro team. And since then in Philadelphia, he's gone on to the Pro Bowl two more times as a safety and just won the Super Bowl as one of the unquestioned leaders of the team. Could Jenkins have been successful as a cornerback in this league and proved worthy of his top 15 selection by the Saints at that position? Sure, maybe, but is there any doubt that his switch to safety was what really transformed him into a special player? Absolutely not. To me, Minka Fitzpatrick is destined to follow in this same path, but he may find even more success because he's even faster and even more physical than Jenkins ever was. And to be clear, the whole point of this is not me saying to avoid putting him in the slot. If your team already has a good free safety and you need a nickel defender, sure, screw it, put him in the slot. We already know he can do that just fine. But if you don't have your Malik Hooker, your Devin McCourty, or your Earl Thomas already on the roster, why would you waste Fitzpatrick's talent by putting him anywhere else? Just because Alabama played him near the line of scrimmage doesn't mean that his future NFL team has to as well. That's why, in my opinion, his best fit, at least within the top 10 picks, is probably Cleveland. They just drafted Jabril Peppers last year, who was also a very good nickel defender in college, but they were forced to play Peppers at free safety as a rookie because they had no other options. Now, as good as Peppers is as a nickel back, and as fast and as rangy as he is, he was never really suited to be a free safety because he doesn't have the ball skills that Fitzpatrick does, which is one of the most important requirements for the position. If the Browns take Fitzpatrick to compliment him though, all of a sudden now they have someone who can play free safety and excel there, and they can move Peppers down to his more natural position in the slot. Just from a single pick, their secondary can get better at two places instead of one. It is easily his best fit in the draft, and now that the Browns just signed Carlos Hyde in free agency as well, they're likely not going to take Saquon Barkley. So theoretically, that puts them in a great spot to take Fitzpatrick at fourth overall. It is a perfect match for the player and for the team, and I would be stunned if Cleveland takes any other player at that fourth pick than Fitzpatrick. If they trade down, fine, but if they keep the pick and they don't take him, despite how well he fits what they need and what they do, I would be floored, just simply, utterly floored. Whoever his future NFL team winds up being though, they have a very unique opportunity ahead of them. There's really only a handful of safeties in the league that I think could play center field on every snap and truly change the complexion of their defense. Some of them exclusively play single high like Earl Thomas and Malik Hooker, and some of them kind of flex all over the field like Malcolm Jenkins and Landon Collins. But regardless of their main role, when they're back there patrolling in the middle of the field, quarterbacks can feel it. They actively avoid huge sections of real estate because they know it's not safe to test these guys. That's the value that a great safety can provide. They convert huge areas of open grass into no man's land just with their presence alone, and it forces offenses to make perfect throws and insane catches just to move the ball downfield. Minka Fitzpatrick is extremely talented, and I'm sure that no matter where he goes, he's going to be successful. But if he's lucky, and he goes to a team that is willing to play him in the right position, it's not a matter of if he becomes an all-pro, it's when.
Thank you so much for watching this week's episode, and I want to thank this week's sponsor again, MyBookie, as well, for making this show possible. MyBookie has been extremely generous and extended their sponsorship offer again for this week while March Madness is still going on. So if you've been watching the tournament so far like I have, especially because my alma mater, Cal State Fullerton, is playing Purdue this Friday, uh, I know we're going to get killed, but f*** it, we made it in. I'm going to celebrate while I still can. Uh, I'm also throwing 50 bucks on them because... When else can I bet on Cal State Fullerton in March Madness? But if you've been watching all these games like me, not to get too sidetracked, and you want to make a little bit of money on the side while you do it, my bookie is offering a huge 50% sign-up bonus with promo code BRETT, and you don't even have to just bet on college basketball either. You can bet on the NFL, the NBA, boxing, MMA, esports, whatever you want to put money on, you can do it on my bookie. So head on over to the link in the description, put in promo code BRETT on registration, and collect that sweet, sweet sign-up bonus. As for me, I have a new mock draft coming out on my Patreon page today exclusively for all my patrons. You can find that link in the description as well down below. I was going to release one right before free agency, but there were so many conflicting reports on who was going where that I really didn't know how to slot some of these picks. So now that the contracts have started flying and we have a better idea of who is going where, I can finally start to mock these picks a little bit easier. So check out that new mock on Patreon too, and I'll be back in a week with another episode. Until then, later. Later.